There are around 800 billionaires in the United States, and most, if not all, pay zero dollars in taxes. And they do it legally. Buy, borrow, die. The three steps that allow demons like Bezos, Gates, and Zuckerberg to navigate the tax system and keep their billions away from the working class. I say that like it won't just all go to Israel. Why isn't it possible? It's just not. Why not, you stupid bastard? To set the stage, if the tippity top of the wealthy paid the same rate of taxes as the average American, it could bring in possible hundreds of billions of dollars, which could go towards things that a majority of Americans desperately need that our government decides, no, no, drugs like insulin and their prices are fine. Just don't spend on things you don't need, like that broken headlight on your old Accord that's got a ticket written all over it or food. Instead of those billions funding healthcare or other dire needs like education, permanent shelter for the homeless, taking care of our veterans, or paying for loans that I and many others like me need help with. Instead, Bezos went to space. Bezos went to space for four minutes, and it costs 5.5 billion dollars. He is so rich, he's clutching his pearls from the entire Earth. <laughs> To help understand how this process works, I'll be using an example of a made-up billionaire who happened to stumble upon a large amount of wealth. Let's call him... Elon Musk. Mr. Busk has managed to gain billions by many different ways, doesn't matter. He doesn't want to pay taxes. He wants to spend more on his illegitimate children, Mr. Busk does. So, what he realizes is that owning assets, the example I'll use is a factory, where his workers produce best-luck cars and rocket shaped like dicks, while he's in his office creating quite literally the worst Elden Ring build of all time. Owning that factory, that asset, is not taxable by the federal government, and if the value of that factory goes up, he won't be taxed because of the Supreme Court ruling of Eisner v. McComber, which says that the gains, the increase in value of an asset, can't be taxed until the thing is sold. And an asset can be a lot of things, a factory and other real estate, stock holdings, fucking social media apps that you bought to push AI-generated pictures of yourself, so you at least have something to do during divorce court. So, because he doesn't have to report any income from the value of his factory, he doesn't pay taxes until he decides to sell it, which, if the value of the factory keeps going up, there's no reason to sell it and have the government come in and take part of that sale. But among the filthy rich, some do report high levels of income, but there's a huge menu of ways to get around this too, mostly using deductions and getting credits that reduce the amount of taxes they owe through channels like sports teams or charities that have been heavily lobbied for. So taxes aren't an issue for the GOAT, are they? Nope, doesn't have to report income on the value of those six rings. But if he doesn't sell the factory, how is Elam going to afford his lavish lifestyle? From the aforementioned child support, to the laundry list of lawsuits against his companies, to the maintenance of both his hairline and his body that moves like Plankton took control of it, but Elam is still in there fighting for the wheel. Mr. Busk knows he has to live, he needs his ketamine, but he doesn't want to sell any of his assets and lose part of that money to taxes. So Mr. Busk goes to a bank, and banks love billionaires because they have lots of assets. And when taking out a loan, you need collateral, something that the bank would claim as payment if Elon wasn't able to pay it off. But it's Elon Busk, they know he's got that factory, so they give him a really good loan low interest rates that still make them some money and the possibility of him coming back in the future. In essence, he's paying the low, low interest rate of his loans to the banks instead of having to pay the tax rate if he were to sell his assets or receive a salary which he isn't. The hypothetical company, uh, Besla, and their board of directors decided to not pay their billionaire CEO a salary because if they did, like every other person with a job, he would have to pay income taxes. That's the game. Become a billionaire through any means necessary, never sell any of your assets, and live on money received through loans you're able to take out because of the value of your assets. And for the rest of his life, Elon will only pay taxes if he buys Rhodesian Rhino boner pills at the Besla supercharger station. <laughs> When the day finally comes, when death knocks on Warren Buffett's door and says, Sorry I'm late, I was, uh, busy. Let's see, you are 93 years old? Thought that prostate cancer would've done the trick. Anyways, time to collect that estate tax that everyone abides by, right Warren? Warren? <laughs> Unfortunately, there are paths around the estate tax as well, and first, I'll start with a lie. 
charity. Obviously not the ones that do good stuff, like help people recover from natural disasters, but the ones that pay Kurzgesagt to make videos that glaze the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation and also provide a way to avoid taxes. Charities themselves are tax exempt, and the donations to those charities also aren't taxed, so what Elon can do is start up the Busk Foundation charity under the guise of, I'm so rich, look guys, I just feel the need to give my money away today, please give me a headline. Donate however much he feels like, mainstream media will give him his headline, and the charity can do any marginal change in society, but it won't offset the effect that money could have if it just went towards taxes. And the worst part of it all, if Elam is part of the board of directors of the charity, he can get them to do whatever he wants with the money. So that money can sit there not accruing taxes, then take a page out of Trump's book and take the money from his own charity and spend it on a portrait of himself, which he did in 2007, he also pledged $45 million a month to his campaign. <laughs> then his PR team yelled at him, Listen, we can't deal with this and trying to make you look smart for commenting good idea on Noah's Ark on the moon. You have to pick, you have to pick one. You have to pick one. There's more ways to avoid the estate tax as well. One's called, Jesus Christ, the Angel of Death loophole, which works like this. So Elam dies and his factory gained value due to his shattering genius from let's say 200k to a million and that increase in value isn't taxed because he never sold it. The transfer of the factory from Elam to his heir goes through the step up basis, which means that if Elam had sold the factory during his lifetime, he would have had to pay 20% capital gains tax on the 800,000 it gained. But once the factory is inherited and given to the heir, the gains reset and they could sell it for a million dollars immediately and pay no taxes on the value it gained during Elam's life. This is legal, remember, and that includes the estate tax, right? The law that sums up the total value of assets when someone dies and takes about 40% of that amount before it transfers to the heirs, right? As of 2024, the minimum value of your assets must reach 13 million to qualify for the estate tax. Any amount less than that, your assets transfer untouched, but Elon Musk crosses that threshold, at least until his bestless stocks lose another record of $200 billion. When someone dies, their estate is compiled as their gross estate by an executor, who's appointed before death by the person, a single number determined by the sum of their assets, stocks, real estate, cars, whatever, at fair market value. Not what Elon paid for it while growing up as a product of apartheid, but what it's valued at at the time of death. The executor takes the value of the assets and subtracts the liabilities, any outstanding debts, aka loans taken out against factories, and what results is the taxable estate. Anytime a billionaire dies, their estate is taxed at the highest rate of 40%, and after that tax is applied, it becomes the net estate to be inherited by the heirs, so the more assets Elam can remove from his gross estate, the less taxes he has to pay at death. So next, let's go over trusts. There's a long list of different types of irrevocable trusts, but let's focus on something called a living trust. A living trust is set up based on Elam, the grantor, gifting stuff to his beneficiaries, his trust fund kids, and the assets aren't counted in Elam's estate. But the catch is that the assets can only be taken out by the beneficiaries while following the rules set up by Elam. So Elam's choking to death on his own farts and is an inch away from death. He calls up his lawyer and tells him to put the factory into the Busk Living Trust for his son, who he named after one of his childhood heroes. So Elam Goebbels Busk Jr. becomes the beneficiary for the factory and under the rules dictated by his dad and his lawyer, he can take the factory out of the trust and continue its operations while completely avoiding the estate tax and also using the angel of death loophole, he could sell it for a million dollars with out paying capital gains tax. Oh God, they try to drown me in this hope. I cannot see buy, borrow, die. Completely legal, an avenue for Bezos to get out of paying for the DOT to fix the axle threatening pothole that's on your way to work, or food stamps for the 12% of Americans that need them, or a kid's textbook so they can learn about Phil the Pharaoh. It's something not covered a lot, but there have been some advocates for correcting the tax system, including one such Warren Buffett who wrote an opinion in the New York Times in 2011 in which he wrote, and while most Americans struggle to make ends meet, we mega rich continue to get our extraordinary tax breaks. These and other blessings are showered upon us by legislators in Washington who feel compelled to protect us, much as if we were spotted owls or some other endangered species. It's nice to have friends in high places. My friends and I have been coddled long enough by a billionaire-friendly Congress. It's time for our government to get serious about shared sacrifice. 
What a nice sentiment, Warren. You seem like a really nice, down-to-earth, honest guy. Because you put forth the Buffett rule during the Obama administration, right? A law that raised the income tax rate for people making over a million dollars. That sounds like such a good idea for those that report income. How much income do you report, Warren? If you're searching for hard evidence, in IRS files reported by ProPublica in 2021, they detail popular billionaires and what they paid in taxes from 2014 to 2018. Specifically, the difference between income they reported that was taxed and how much their estimated wealth grew during that time that they didn't report because they don't have to pay taxes on gains made from their assets if they don't sell them. From 2014 to 2018, Warren reported $125 million and paid $23.7 million in taxes, but his net worth increased by an estimated $24.3 billion, giving him a true tax rate of 0.1%. The average American paid 14%. And in 2015, 14,000 taxpayers reported a higher income than him. And if you did, you have the right to walk into the surgery room and steal the tumor from his prostate the next time he gets surgery, like it's a first-class Pope relic. The question then arises, how do we fix it? What do we do about this being legal? It's a complex issue. It deals with shareholders of trillion dollar corporations and the long history of the American tax system. But the Senate Finance Committee has proposed a tax on unrealized capital gains, which would establish a threshold for rich people with lots of assets that they're intentionally not selling and apply an annual flat tax to the assets of those rich people. That's progress, but it mostly affects step one. Uh, borrowing and dying still requires restructuring. And because this tax probably violates Eisner v. McComber, SCOTUS would have to overturn a ruling, which is something they're pretty good at. But if there's no billionaires, what is Clarence Thomas going to do with his 104 days of summer vacation? But if you're asking me about billionaires and just their existence in general, uh, the answer may shock you. I'm gonna keep doing more of these style of videos because the election is coming up. Gonna show how that works. So like if you want, comment if you learned a single thing from this video. Subscribe if you want to. Okay. Peace.